patients need as part of the fostering. Obviously, they need love. They need some help. A lot of it's the mother, you know, feeds them and grooms them and teaches them their life skills. But so, what do you need to provide uh, for the kittens and for their growth? Well, part of why I wanted a litter with a mom was because, like you said, I wouldn't have to bottle feed. And but a lot of these mothers have been out on the streets and are sick and they're tired, and many of them haven't had moms. Um, I've been lucky that the two moms I had were very loving, but with Holly, the second mom, she was still very sick, and she didn't even want to go in and feed them right away. So um, I would have to pick her up and put her in there, and she would stay. But that means that I have to give them that companionship and play with them a little bit more because she's not teaching them to play. Um, but by the end, she was great with them when she was feeling better. But a lot of it really is teaching them to interact with a human being and how to sit in the same room with a human being and not attack their feet and, you know, let them, like, if somebody adopts them, they're going to come home after work at the end of the day and they're going to want to check their email, watch TV, be with their families, and they can't constantly play with their kittens and their cats. And I think a lot of viewers want us to play with them constantly. But I've had to explain that, you know, we're socializing them to be in a home with a family. And we're teaching them not to grab on and bite your hand when you pet them. We're teaching them to let us pick them up and love them and kiss them so that if a, if a family adopts them, the kids will be safe and the parents. Um, but we're, we're trying to get them as lovable and socialized as possible. You know, my last kittens um, in the last litter were hugging me and kissing me, and I wanted to encourage that because I think most people have this idea of cats and kittens that they're independent and they're not like dogs, they're not lovable and kissful and um, cuddly, and they really can be. And that's my goal is to get them healthy and socialize them to be super kittens. Are there particular kinds of toys that kittens need uh, for their growth? I mean, I've noticed in some places there's things of varying heights for them to climb on and jump on. And that's not just for play, is it? No. Um, at least not in my case. I think um, with my first litter, they were climbing and jumping and kicking, so I didn't have to worry about teaching them how to climb. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but with this, these two, they weren't climbing. I couldn't, they weren't jumping up on top of the condo, um, and they were older than my last litters, and they should have been, so I specifically brought in um, the condo that had two levels, I had toys that I could lure them to the top of the condo with. Um, I tried to get them on the very top of the scratching post. Um, you know, there was, I had a, a chasing trail that I would leave them on with what we call the rainbow, which is the, the long rainbow piece of fabric felt on a stick. And I would train them to run over the cat tree and onto another uh, medium sized tight uh, level, and then on top of the two story condo. And within a day, um, the kitten that kept trying to climb and falling off was on top flying around. And I think they need to do that in order to feel safe and to protect themselves if they end up in a home with other pets until they feel comfortable with those other pets. Cats need perches, so they got to be able to get up there. Yeah, it's it's important for adoptive uh, parents, I guess, uh, when they get a kitten, to understand that they can't just take the kitten home and put it in the house with the apartment. That they've got to provide these things for the kitten. Uh, yeah. To keep it busy and, and not and not hurt. Oh, absolutely. Especially the restaurant I'm with now. Um, part of why I chose them is because they will only adopt out in a, kit, a kitten with another kitten or if there's already a cat in the home. And I believe, it, you know, we all believe that kittens need to play. When people complain that kittens are attacking them or going crazy, 
I truly believe it's because they have all this pent up energy that they haven't been able to release. And they need to be able to climb and jump and, you know, with the two I have now, um, Kayla is a lot more energetic most of the time than Tucker. Um, well, not a lot more. She's got, he's gotten better, but he was very sick in the beginning and he couldn't play with her. And she needed those toys to kind of burn off that energy so she wouldn't hurt him. <laughs> and I think that when I go in there, I, I watch and I make sure that they play for at least a good half an hour before I go in so that when I go in there, it's more about affection and, you know, gentle playing and cuddling. Um, but they need to be able to, even if they're by themselves, run around and let that kitten energy loose because that energy lingers for years. You know, until cats, in my experience, until after about five years old, the ones who've got energy are going to keep having energy. And even after five, if they're really, you know, fun kitties, they'll be bouncing off the walls. So they need we, to have, we have energy. One, we have one that zooms back and forth, and back and forth all day. <laughs> right. She, and my cats have ten. never, yeah. they've never scratched my furniture. They've never damaged anything because I've always made sure that they've had their very own furniture that they know is theirs, that has their smell, that they can own. So they have no need to own mine. <laughs> I like my couch. 